emailed a client of yours or something like that or, or whatever, and they don't respond back to you. Okay. You're like, did they get it? Because in the cyber world, we have no idea where this stuff goes. Did they get it? So it's the same thing if they respond to you. They ask you a question. They even just say, oh, by the way, it was great meeting you. Oh, by the way, thank you for spending time with me, whatever it is. Or they inquire about whatever it is. Just respond back to them. You be the last one so that they know that you acknowledge it and you heard it and those sort of things as well. They want personal attention, what you talked about, but more importantly, what they want is a positive, memorable experience. Folks, they want to be able to brag about you. The question is, do you give them a reason or are you just average? Are you just average? Okay, you gotta understand those sort of things. But here's where the magic really begins, and that's with people. Walt Disney said you can design and create and build the most wonderful place in the world, but it takes people to make the dream a reality. You know, JD and I have been around a lot of businesses. Some have great products, some have great services, but they got the wrong people working there. I mean, it's the wrong people. I don't care what kind of product you have, you ain't making any magic. With the people that answer the phones, the people that work on the reception area, the desk, the people that serve, the people that show up in my house in the truck. So we want to make sure we have the right people. I work with a lot of businesses and, and I help a lot of, particularly small businesses, understand this. So some have great products and services, but they have people that work there that have a personality of a dead fish. This is not gonna work. So I created a program, by the way, in my research, and spending eight years of this, I created a program <coughs> to find, interview, and hire magical people, eight steps to never have a bad hire again. How many of you have ever interviewed somebody that did great on an interview and then lousy on the job? Hey, let me put both my hands up, okay? I know what you're going through. See, I remember, I know how to hire people. Come on, I've been managing hotels for 25 years. I know how to hire people. And I would hire people, my staff for six months later, who hired that bozo? Mm -hmm. Oh, that was me, <laughs> sorry. I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. That's why I developed that program. Now I don't have enough time today to share that program with you, but it's a valuable asset because if you don't have the right people, I don't care your product or service that you have. Because you, if you're the business owner in the room, you're not around 24 hours a day. You're not answering every phone. You're not servicing every single client. You have people to do that. And you gotta make sure you get the right people. I'm gonna, yeah, I will give you a gold nugget on that. And the gold nugget is this. People go, well, how does Disney find those great people? Well, because Disney knows people make up everything, because Walt said, you can have a great place, but it's the people in it that make it magical. So what Disney does is Disney hired people to fill roles, not positions. If you've never went to Disneyland or Disney World, you're gonna go, man, that person's perfect for that job. Hey, where do they find these people? Well, because Disney understands the role versus the position. And the best way to describe it is using this example. Now, I know JD thinks he's some big hot guy because he's got Jerry Seinfeld. You know, I got Jerry Seinfeld to do this. And I got video with Jerry Seinfeld. And Jerry Seinfeld thinks I'm number one at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you what I got. I got Jason Alexander. <laughs> That's right. Sorry, Katie. Jason Alexander, most of you, of course, know George. He was my favorite character on Seinfeld, by far, my favorite one. And we have, we have every episode of Seinfeld. We have it all seen. My, my son's going to recite an entire episode by heart. I mean, it's just, it's just a great, great program that you all know. But Jason Alexander, plays a role as an actor, as any actor would, would you agree? But the interesting thing was, um, we were, Jason Alexander and I were both uh, at, to this, at an event, I was a keynote speaker, Jason Alexander was being interviewed. And so they put us both at a dinner table, and I was waiting for him to sit down. As soon as he sat down, I sat right next to him. Because I wanted to sit next to him, I want to talk to him. He's, so I sit there next to him, and I said, hi, I'm John from Mike. He says, hi, I'm Jason Alexander. I said, oh, I know who you are. <laughs> I said, ah, oh, we just love Seinfeld. It was such a great show, man. We just loved it. And he goes, oh, yeah. I said, but I, here, I'm just honored to sit next to you. And he goes, oh, thanks. I said, no, you know, obviously I'm honored to sit next to you, but, but I, I'd love to, to have this opportunity because I wrote a whole chapter about you in my book. He goes, what? I said, yeah, I have a top selling book. No more in the world. And I wrote a chapter about you in my book. He goes, why? I said, because you're perfect for my story. And then he said, do you mind telling me the story? I said, sure. See, Jason Alexander is an incredible actor, but most people never heard of him. Did you know that before he was on Seinfeld, do you know that he won a Tony Award for dancing? 
the musical on Broadway. Mm -hmm. He's an incredible singer and dancer. Do you know that he was nominated for Academy Award for the part he played with Richard Gere and Julia Roberts mm -hmm. in Pretty Woman? Eight times he's nominated and or won an Emmy Award on television for the role he played with the Seinfeld sitcom. Now he's doing things internationally, and I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, every single thing this guy does, it turns to gold. He's won every single imaginable award associated with the acting professionals out there. How many of you think he must be pretty good? You, would, you think he's got a nice, good resume? Sure. But how many of you in this room think that Jason Alexander, AKA George Costanza, would be awesome playing the part of James Bond? <laughs> what do you think, ladies? No way, just ask my wife. My wife has no desire to see Jason Alexander come out of the ocean with his shirt off. <laughs> but just there with the new Bond for the AIDS, right? See, although he's a good actor, can he play every part? No. Some of you in this room have really nice people working for you. That's nice. Some of them are in the wrong role. I didn't say fire them. I didn't say kick them out. I didn't say you know get rid of them. I just said you gotta find the right people in the right role. That's like taking a quiet, introverted person and having them answer phones for your business or in the reception area, or whatever it is, and they do this. Good morning, get a heavy. And you're the boss. You go, come on, John. I need you to smile more. I need a little more energy. I need to move. These are our customers. And the person does this. And let me give you a tip. While you're here today, they're not smiling back in the office. You wanna know why? Because you gotta make them smile, which is a you problem, not a them problem. I love doing leadership workshops. I love working with business owners, because when you have lousy employees, when you have non-performing employees, when you have employees that are not providing great experiences, that is an absolutely 100% you problem, not them. And that's why most leaders don't get it. So my leadership workshops, Help them understand that you can't make anybody do anything. But if you find people in the right role, they'll go through a good role for you. Tap understanding that. Let me show you how it works. There's a security guard asking a little girl for an autograph, pretending he mistook her for a princess. Uh, how does that happen? Well, if you're going to hire a security guard to work at the Magic Kingdom, what kind of person are you looking for? What kind of person do you want on his resume? Police officer, ex military, somebody that's strong. There's a million people in the park. Got to make sure authority and everything is in order, right? Disney says no. Disney says let's understand what the role is of a security guard in the Magic Kingdom. And what they found out is that security guard is the third most person that gets asked more questions than anybody else in the Magic Kingdom. So is that person really role a security guard or a guest relations host? What does he do? He creates magic. When they go back to Sydney, who do you think they're going to talk about after spending a day at Disney? That security guard. How is Space Mountain Mountain Guard? Did you see some character? That was right. That was the food. Yeah, that was right. Monorail? Yeah, that was right. Shows? Yeah, that was right. What was the best part? A security guard. Seriously? Yeah. That's what Disney does. When I work with organizations and businesses and, and, and small businesses, I help you define what their real role is so that you can match the right person in the right role. Otherwise, you have a square peg in a round hole. Many people say, well, they'll convert to our culture. They'll convert to our style. I'll, they'll understand that they have to smile. They have to have a good sense of energy. They have, no, they don't have to do any of that. You're the leader. You're the owner. You're going to try to make them. It's not going to work. 75,000 employees, by the way, work at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida alone. 75,000, okay? It's the largest single one location employer in the United States. And as I, as they travel, as I travel around, people ask me, how do they do it? I think it's 75,000 people that come to work every day, smiling and happy, right? They see a piece of paper on the floor, they run and pick it up because it doesn't belong. Yet your business is you can't get your people to show up to work on time, answer the phones, fill out paperwork. You think we walked around with big sticks beating people over the head? We create an environment where they wanted to do it. But if you find the right people in the right role, they'll do it for you. One of the things that I always say is never hire anybody that needs a job. Never hire anybody that needs a job. That sounds profound, right? I need a job, you need a job, you need jobs. But when you hire someone that needs a job, guess who they work for? Themselves. When you hire people that believe in what you believe in, they'll go through a good wall. Because what you're trying to create, ladies and gentlemen, 
is, is what Disney calls the on-stage experience. It's showtime. It's showtime. Okay? In seven seconds, in seven seconds, your customers, your clients, are forming 10 or more impressions of you, your business, and your organization in seven seconds. By the way, how many of you answer the phones for customers? Or you have staff that do that? It's less than three. Less than three seconds to make a great magical expression. Impression. If you don't have the right people, it's not gonna happen. Okay? But more importantly, you have to understand what is your showtime? What does it look like? Are you ready for showtime? 75,000 people at Disney, you think they're all wonderful, right? Man, those people are great. Listen, I worked there for 11 years. Some of them are jerks, okay? But you wouldn't know it because every time you come across a Disney cast member, it is on stage. Hey, how you doing? Showtime, right? How can we help you going out of the way? What are some first impressions? Anybody? Give me a first impression. Appearance. Appearance. What do you mean by appearance? They stall the dress. I love that. I'm going to give you a magical wand for that one. <laughs> appearance, right? So what do you mean by appearance? So do, it has to look the part, right? If you're going to have an actor and actress, don't they have to wear a costume? Oh, by the way, do you know Disney is the only company on planet Earth that has a strict appearance grooming guidelines that half the people in this room would never ever be allowed to work at Disney? And there are five-star generals in the United States that cannot work for Disney because they can't meet the grooming guidelines. You want to hear them? If you're a male and you want to work for Disney, your hair cannot touch your ears. Your sideburns cannot go past your earlobes. You're not allowed any piercings whatsoever. You can't have a visible tattoo anywhere on your body that will be seen while you are working. Well, I'll just wear a long sleeve shirt. No, you won't. Because when it's 100 billion degrees in Orlando, Florida, it's a short sleeve uniform. You're not going to go through your entire career with a band aid. You have four different color, hair colors that you're allowed, and the only combination is gray. When I was at Disney, a long standing tradition was you were not allowed any facial hair whatsoever to work at Disney. It's kind of funny because Walt Disney had a mustache. Yes, you know, if you own the company, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> what the heck does that mean? I see people in this room with beards and mustaches. Does that mean you guys aren't any good? No, it has nothing to do with it. It might be outstanding. Ladies, you want to hear yours? Oh, by the way, Disney recently upgraded those. And men are allowed to wear a mustache or beard. However, they are not allowed to grow it while they are working. So you have to be hired with a beard or mustache? or you have to do it on vacation. Because to this day, five o'clock shadow is not permitted on Disney property. You get sent home, no pay, see you. Why? Because it's gonna ruin the show. Ladies, you wanna hear yours? Sure. Your hair can't touch your ears. <laughs> this is light up, what are you guys doing? <laughs> Yes, your hair, your hair can touch your ears, it's okay. All right? But your hair has four colors, and the only combination is gray. You can't have blonde streaks, red streaks going through your hair. You're allowed two earrings, one in this ear, one in that ear. Can't be bigger than a nickel, and can't be a hoop. Your fingernails cannot be one quarter of an inch past your fingers. They tell you four different kinds of makeup, eyeshadow, lipstick, nail polish and you're allowed, it's on the handbook. If it doesn't look like that, not a shade of it, not an almost look like that, you get sent home no pay. You also are not permitted to have any visible tattoos whatsoever to work at Disney. Now why on earth does Disney have that? Anybody? What image is Disney trying to portray? What, okay. Family, clean, and wholesome. That's why Walt created that, because the amusement parks were scaring the living daylights out of people. <laughs> and he said mine would be different. Now, it has nothing to do with that. If you have a mustache, if you have long hair, or you have earrings, you're not any good. That's amazing. But you know what they do? They show a video letting everybody know before you even fill out an application, that is what the standards are. 
And 15% of the people walk out the door and don't even fill out an application. And Disney says, thank you. It doesn't mean you're a loser. It doesn't mean you're not successful. It means what? You don't believe in what Disney believes in. So how in the heck are you going to work here? Okay? Go someplace else and be just as successful. Okay? Are they helpful? Are they cheerful? Do they go out of the way? Do they have a sense of urgency? All of those things. How about body language? Is body language important? I'm going to do some fun exercise real fast. Come on, this person's chair. All right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to sit up in your chair. Everybody sit up. I want you to take your elbows or your, your forearms, and I want you to rest them on your thighs or your knees. I want you to dangle your finger, uh, your hands down with your fingernails um, facing the carpet. I want you to stare at the carpet and repeat after me. I feel terrific. <laughs> Come on, let me hear it. Awesome. All right, everybody stand up. Get the shoes off. All right. How many of you have heard of the movie Rocky? All right, everybody, fists up in the air. Come on, pump up your fists up in the air. I want you to imagine you are Rocky Balboa. You just climbed up the, the stairs of the Philadelphia Art Museum. Your fists are pumped up high. Repeat after me. I am depressed. I am depressed. <laughs> See, you can't feel terrific staring at carpet and, and you can't be depressed with your arms up in the air. But how many of you have walked into a restaurant, walked into a business, walked anywhere? Good morning, John. Yeah, what's a good uh... <laughs> You know what I can do, folks? I do customer experience evaluations, not customer service evaluations. I don't do a shopper report. I don't waste the money. Please. You want some feedback? I guess that's okay. But that's not going to help you change and transform your business. I do customer experience evaluations. You know what I can find? I can walk in anybody's business, any organization, any room for that matter. You give me 30 seconds, 30 seconds, and I can point out all the people that don't want to be here or be there. How do I do that? You look at them. And yet day in and day out and day in and day out, those people are exposed to your customers. Your staff is doing that. That's a bad show. Disney would never accept that because this is why. Every action is an intentional impression, a direct reflection of your business and you. How many of you have ever gone to a restaurant and had a bad experience from a waiter or waitress? It happens, okay? What do you tell your friends? Don't go there. It's a shame, I had the other waiter, he was awesome. Man, I've told like 100 people on Facebook, you gotta go there. One person in your organization who's not ready for showtime will screw up your business experience. One person. That's why at Disney, we make sure everybody one of the things when I do with organizations, I make sure that your entire show looks good. You know, JD makes your website, your brochures. That's showtime, isn't it? Because you're not going to attract anybody if it goes up and it looks like crap. But once they get there, what does it look like? What kind of experience are they having? It's got to be showtime. Because it's a cycle of experience. Every, man, every touch point with your customers is an opportunity to create magic. One of the things that I love doing is going into any business and look at every single touch point that you have in a customer before, during, and after, and we make it magical. We make you the un in that business. Because you have to differentiate. They, they realize they have to be different. Just like JD talked about your marketing needs to be different, your business experience and your organizational experience has to be different. Not just during, by the way. Most people focus on during. What happened before? What happened after? Okay. What are you doing to touch your customer after that continues to magic so that they continue to be loyal? Most people love to get the transaction, they never hear from them again. You want to constantly touch them. How many of you have ever gone to Disney and had those waffles before? Are they awesome or what? I got people from them when they were at Disney, they had them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's all they wanted to eat. I get emails from people going, John, could you give me the recipe for those waffles? Because we want to make them at home, man. And then I tell them, there is no recipe. It's out of a box mix. But you make them look like Mickey, they taste better. <laughs> you know why? Because Walt believed in this philosophy, and this is, I'll share a gold nugget with you as well. Because this is the best part that I love. Walt said, he called it the plus factor. Whatever you do, plus it by one. Whatever you do, plus it by one. Don't make those experiences average. What can you do to make it this much better? Not this much better, 
this much better and keep trying to plus it. Cleanliness, your relationships, the quality of your product, hire this much better, train this much better. Everything you do, make it that much better. And that's what he did with the waffles. What can we do this much better? Well, let's make it look like Vicky. Boom. A billionaire success story. Okay. Because as JD will tell you, and I will just reinforce it as well, marketing is not about selling products and services. I don't care. You think your product is the number one this and the number two that. Who gives a darn? If they're not telling any stories about their experiences in your business, you're boring and average. If there's nothing that they're gonna share on Facebook or, or tell their friends at, at, at the office or their relative, if they're not sharing stories, you gotta say to yourself, I guess we'd just be satisfying our customers. And the way you do that, you have to exceed the expectations. You don't want just happy guests and satisfied guests. You want thrilled and wild. How can you do that? You provide them extras. You know, JD talks about giving more value Throw in the, the holiday, throw in uh, the free cups of coffee, whatever it is. It's not discounting, it's just giving them more. I like to give them more so they remember you, not just because you got them to be to your business, but now you gotta take good care of them, okay? This picture on the left-hand side, on your right-hand side there, it's the Westin Hotel in LAX, in Los Angeles. I'm a runner, I go out every morning and go run four or five miles. I stay at the Westin Hotel. Every time I come back from my room in the morning, the Valley Parker runs and gives me a bottle of water. How much does a bottle of water you think costs a, a nice hotel like that? It's a $300 night hotel. And guess what I talk about? A bottle of water. I don't talk about the sheets. I don't talk about the shampoos. I don't talk about the nice hamburger that we can have at the restaurant. I talk about the, bo dollar of water, the bottle of water. By the way, I stayed at the five star, one of the most historical, best hotels you could possibly stay in the United States. It's called the Breakers in West Palm Beach, Florida. I was there for three days, went running every morning, and no one gave me a problem. <laughs> the point I'm making is that you don't have to be a five star hotel to do this. You can be a Motel 6 to do it if you choose to do it, to differentiate your business. And that's what you have to offer. And then this organization gives out these little spongy balls to the kids, so that it's a running shoe store, so that they can spend time one-on-one -on -one with mom and dad to get them in the right running shoe store, so they can spend $175 on a running shoe. Right? Again, give them a great experience, they'll spend some money. Here's some other ways to do it, special follow-up. How do you follow up, thank you notes, those sort of things. Make it easy to do business with you. Disney wants you to stay on Disney property, so what do they do? They take your bags right off the carousel at the Orlando airport and they take it right to your room. You don't have to worry about it. Does a Hyatt do that? No. Does a Marriott do that? No. Does a Hilton do that? No. Does a Crown Plaza do that? No. Disney does that. It's an added, added thing that you get as part of that experience and it doesn't cost any more money. Sort of. They charge you in other ways. Okay? Um, make exceptions to handle their special needs. Right? I'm not saying the disability needs, I'm talking about how many of you have the mentality that if I do it for one, I'm gonna to have to do it for them all. Seriously? That's short-term thinking. Short-term thinking. I'm afraid if I do one, I'm gonna to have to, just like JD gave you some examples, that's, that's like $10. Yeah, but it's gonna bring you 10 million. How many of you would spend $10 to get 10 million? Yeah, you gotta think that way. So it's that experience to create loyalty. Okay. Create those stories, have a plan when things go wrong. How many of you have things go wrong in your business? Of course, they're gonna go wrong. But do you have a plan when something goes wrong? How many of you have ever stayed in a hotel and a little toilet, or the toilet inside the toilet was making that sissing noise? Yeah. Like, what? what the heck is that, right? So what happens when you, so you tell somebody that, you know, hopefully they fix your toilet, because you're not gonna have to put hands in the back of the toilet and fix it, whatever. Might be. So you go and do all, you just tell someone, they go. So if you tell someone at Disney, one of my hotels when I was there, I don't care who you tell, housekeeper, front desk, that person owned the problem. But the first question they ask is, what are your plans right now? And if the person said, we're going to breakfast and we're coming right back, guess when we fixed it? Now. But John, you can't fix them now. We don't have a thousand plumbers. I didn't say you were going to have a thousand plumbers. But when you've asked that question, you'll determine whether you need to fix it now 
Or most guests said what? If you're going into their apartment, we won't be back until 10 o'clock at night. Ah, now you kind of put it on a priority system. See, so don't be worried about all that other stuff. So you come back to the room, you're a big long day at the park, you come back to the room, what are you thinking? Did, 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 did they fix that toilet? I don't know, honey, I don't hear it. I know, but I didn't hear it earlier today either, right? <laughs> so what we decided to do, I, I talked to my staff, I said, we want to make sure that's a good magical experience, even though something went wrong. So what we decided to do is we put a little tank card on the back of the toilet tank, on top of the tank, with a note from the maintenance person that said, by the way, uh, sorry for the inconvenience, but you know your toilet has been fixed. Hope you're having a great stay. Take all that anxiety out of the way. And then I said to my staff, that's awesome. Got a lot of good comments, feedback. Remember what Walt said, plus it by one. What can we do even better? And this is what my staff came up with that absolutely caused chaos in our resort. Right next to the toilet, right on top of the toilet tank, right next to that tank card, we started to put little Disney figurines right next to that tank card. Could be Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, Mary Poppins, it doesn't make difference who it was. We put it set right next to that tank card. And what do you think happened when we got back in the room? <laughs> People went nuts. Like, oh my God, Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. Right? Or Goofy, whatever it might be. We had to figure out how many kids in the room because we had to put more than one. And then they would take a look at that thing on the rise. They would take it to lunch. They would sleep. And, oh, normal, right? I had some guests tell me, John, you're killing me, man. You're killing me. If I would have known that that little toy would have given my child so much pleasure, I would have bought a box and saved $6,000. <laughs> that's what I talk about. Okay? But here's the neat thing. Marketing is about telling stories. Customer experience is about telling stories. So you go home to Sydney, and your friends and family say, well, how was your trip to Disney? How was it? Oh, it was great. We did this. We did that. And then there was one day our toilet was running. And they go, oh. I'm sorry to hear that. They go, no, it was great. Look at this little thing we got. This is awesome, right? Wow. And you know what your friend said? Gosh, when I go to Disney, I hope my toilet runs too, right? <laughs> take the, as JD said, take the eye off the price. You got to take the eye off the problem by making it magical. They'll forgive you. Okay? You don't have to buy them comp rooms and, and dinners. You just got to make it magical, okay? And lastly, it takes a happy crew to produce a happy show. It takes a happy crew. JD, are you good on time? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, I need three or four people to come right here and stand up. Come with me. Come up right, right here. I just need you to stand right here. You don't have to do anything. You have to stand. Just face, face the group right here. You're going to love this. You don't have to do anything. It's great. All right. Here's what I want you to do. Uh, just stand up. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to say anything. I just want you to enjoy what you're about to receive. Okay? Sound good? All right. Here's what I want all of you to do. On a count of three, I want all of you to stand up and give these people right here the loudest standing ovation they've ever received for 15 seconds. One, two, three, yay! Yeah. All right, you ready? All sit, except you all. Let me. I want to just shut. You still breathing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you get standing ovations every day. You know, right? Yeah. Of course. All right. Before I get to them, let me get to all of you right now. How many of you right now? If you had to go out those doors right now and do the job work that you do each and every day? How many of you have more energy right now? How many of you are a little bit more enthusiastic and excited? <coughs> how did I do that? How did I, how did I do that? I released the endorphins in your body. You released the dolphins out of my body? <laughs> <laughs> the endorphins. The endorphins are the energy releasing enzymes in our body that come out when we are, if you're a runner or a performer or if you've ever worked on a project and you're so excited and got it done and it's successful and you're like, man, I can take on the world. Give me the next one, right? Those, that's because the endorphins were released. How did I release the endorphins? By celebrating. And folks, in our business, in our organizations in this room, we don't do enough celebrating with your staff. You don't do enough celebrating as an organization. How many of you have ever had, heard the term, I always, you know, you always beat me up do something wrong and you never see me do anything right. See, at Disney, we try to create an environment where you want to be there, not that you have to be there. And you do that by creating those things. Now, let me tell you, you guys feel good. You did big, man. You feel good? You feel appreciated? Recognized? Valuable? Now, I don't work with these individuals. Maybe somebody in the room can tell me if this is true or not. Do you feel competent? 
they feel competent. I don't know if they are or not, but they certainly feel competent. But you do a great job, good job. Let's give them a big round of applause. You get a magic wand for participating. You're welcome. You're welcome. And you may sit down. Because the reality is this. We've talked about the customer experience, which is absolutely out of the world. But it won't have a great saying. You take good care of your people, and they'll take care of your customers. I don't care if they have one employee. I don't care if it's you or 100. You've got to build that environment where they'll want to do it. Okay? Because the question I want to ask you, you do your employees walk around with a mug like that? It says, I love my job. I love what I do. Do, you, do your staff, maybe you doing this for me, but does the staff walk around with a mug like that and says, I love my job. This is awesome. Or do they walk around with a mug like that? <laughs> I've been in some organizations, large and small. I'm telling you, a lot of them are like that. So one of the things that I make sure is part of that experience, because everybody's focused on the customer experience, and we have to focus on customers. Folks, you gotta focus on your internal customers as well. What does your work environment look like? What are the people there? What are we doing? I'm not talking about paying them more money. I'm not saying that have you know pizza on Tuesdays and donuts on Monday. There's a lot more to that. Being a leader for 25, 27 years, particularly at Disney, it, it, it was probably the most difficult job I ever had. The stress was unbelievable. But it was also the most fun I ever had. Because we believed in working hard but playing harder. Okay? And Disney employees work really hard and they have more fun. But you don't even know it because they're just doing great jobs. Okay? As Walt said, treat employees like they make a difference and they will. Substitute the word employees and just put the word people. Treat people like they make a difference and they will. Okay? So just imagine if Disney ran your business, what would it look like? It's not far fetched, is it? Talking about building a dream, talking about selling fantasy. We talked about um, making sure you're in the right role and understanding the mindset of your customers and clients. We talked about it showtime. We talked about how to wow your customers. We talked about how to create an environment in the workplace where your people want to do it, not feel like they have to do it. That's the system that's created at Disney. And what I do is I just travel around the world duplicating that system, just like JD, because it's not a matter of just getting customers and clients to come. You gotta keep them. You gotta keep them, not only internal, but you gotta be able to keep those external ones. So Walt said, if you dream it, you can do it. So the question I'm gonna ask is what? All your dreams can come true if you have the courage to pursue them. I get people all the time. John, you travel around the world, you're helping all these businesses and clients to be more successful and create customer loyalty for life. You know, if this model is so good, so successful, how come more people aren't doing it, John? The answer is simple. It's hard. It's not hard to do. It's hard to do things differently. And it's even more hard to do things differently when you don't have a clue. When you think your product and service is awesome, and then you're looking through the wrong colored glasses without understanding that the experience is made up of all kinds of things. Just like marketing is made up of all kinds of things. You know, JD, if you ask JD, what's the number one thing that's gonna make me money, JD will tell you, it's not one. It's a bunch of them. It's all of the things that JD talked about. You gotta do all of them to bring in customers. Just like the experience, you gotta do all of those. And you gotta do it better than your competition. But the way to get started is to, is to quit talking and begin doing. Quit talking and begin doing. and then do whatever you do so well, they want to see it over and over and tell their friends. And that's how you build that business, over and over and over. And you have an internal marketing system that will save you thousands and thousands of dollars. You invest in the marketing, as JD, JD talked about, you invest in trying to get that client attraction and the direct marketing. But if you don't take good care of your customers, they're not gonna be telling people over and over, showing up the door. So I always end with this great idea, and that is, it's not just about the experience, it's about making that experience magical. And I have one great question of the hour right now. That everybody in this room, I hope, is, is thinking about right now. And I'm gonna ask you this. Are you just interested? Okay? When you came here today, you were interested in finding out what JD and I had to say. 
you were interested in trying to get your business better, trying to get more clients and traction. What is this marketing thing about? I'm frustrated. I'm not getting the results. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm a slave to my business. It's not working. That's why you came here. You were interested. You were interested in all the things that JD talked about. You were interested in all the things I talked about. I'm grateful. I'm glad you're interested. But the real question is, are you committed? <coughs> what are you going to do with the stuff you learn? Where, what can you do to take your business even further? 98 and maybe even 99% of most of you in this room think you know what to do. 99% of your room, people in the room, probably not even going to do anything. Because you're going to get back in your business, you're going to go back home, you're going to get family, other things to do, and as JD said, who's got time to build websites and do all this crazy stuff? Who's got time to focus on experience and hiring people and creating a good show and exceeding it? Who's got time to do that? I'm running a business. Stop being interested and think about being committed. Because that's going to separate your business 